to sit down. So one of the producers happened to see the Canadian show mm -hmm. and said, we should bring that guy. And Mark Burnett called me and says, hey, we want you to do Shark Tank. And I was like, Shark what? And he said, it's the American version. Right. And I said, love to. And he said, oh, great, but we start filming tomorrow. <laughs> and so there you go. You know, I was the last one there. But like I always say, it doesn't matter how you get there. Right. It's up to you to take advantage of the opportunity. And there was five sharks originally, and here we are seven years later. Who's your favorite shark? Barbara. <laughs> Barbara. Yeah, she's great. She is really, really, she says it like it is. And in real life, she's really like that. She's really driven, highly motivated. I mean, I love all of them. I love Damon. We're good friends. His kids are good friends with my kids. I mean, they're all great people. Even Kevin. Even Kevin and I are friends. Mm -hmm. And um, so you're, how many companies are you invested with from Shark Tank? Um, I think it's over 30, 36 or 43 or something like that. And the thing is, all of us have teams of people that now run rent. And I always like to say, I think I have the best track record. I think our, our rate is about 12.8% return across the entire seven years, which sounds really good, mm -hmm. but it's deceiving. Because there are some that are on life support and they haven't died yet, so it hasn't brought our rate down. And we're trying to keep them on life support, so it keeps my average really good. What are some of the, your favorites or the best performers that people would have seen on the show and uh, maybe give us an inside scoop? Uh, my favorite one is a product called Tip Seals. So one guy was a doctor, one guy's a lawyer. They're tired of being doctors and lawyers. And walk into a bar. <laughs> Carry on. So they do a Google search on things most search for businesses, and they come across ugly Christmas sweaters. Mm -hmm. They're saying, well, how do we make it different? So they say, we're going to make inappropriate ugly Christmas sweaters, like three reindeer doing it. I so have that onesie. Thank you. <laughs> no, I do. Because I wore it for Christmas. Christmas. For Christmas. It, my mom couldn't even tell the reindeer were humping one another. So it was genius. It was subversive yeah. and sassy. I loved you, it. You can't tell. No. Santa. I knew. No. And uh, they came on the show. They were doing 600000 a year. And the other shark said, it's ridiculous. It's a sweater company. No one's going to pay that kind of money for it. But I thought we could always expand because I thought I had a great brand and that kind of stuff. And that was four years, three years ago, and this year we'll do $17 million. Yeah, it's great. We sold all the sweaters for $80, we're making for six bucks. It's a great business. Yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah. I'm gonna start making ugly Easter sweaters. Remind me about that. Yeah, I mean, I shouldn't have told you about that. Uh, I think we should take questions from the audience because they're all here to um, pick your brain. So uh, who has a question? I'll Sally, Jesse, Raphael, it and come out to the audience. Wow. Yeah, I'm very accessible. Anybody? Oh, over here. Oh, excuse me. Oh, pardon me. Excuse me. Lady with the baby. Oh, excuse me. Hi, what's your name? Spider. Spider. Okay. Hi, Robert. Hi. Uh, where is the show taped? Uh, we actually, uh, great question. The show's taped here in LA in Culver City. What people don't realize about our show is we're the highest bought show on network television. ABC bought 35 episodes last year. To give you an idea, the average network show is 12 episodes, like Dancing with the Stars, or uh, Law and Order, and it takes three months to film. We're 35 episodes. How many days of filming do you think we do? Yeah, you want to ask 17, which is really low. When I was on Dancing with the Stars, and so was Carson, I filmed 75 days in a row. I was out of my mind. And I never read the contract. I thought, 12 episodes, how long can it take? <laughs> 75, mind you, on Dancer with the Stars, you get to hang out with Kim and, you know, Kim Johnson, and Shark Tank, you get to hang out with Kevin. <laughs> Not the same. But it's all filmed here. It's a great show. We film eight days in June, nine in September. We never film more than three days in a row because we're not very good. We're not actors. That's what people don't realize. They say, oh, you're so good on TV. And I'm like, it's just me. And people are like, is Kevin really that mean? I'm like, it's just Kevin. <laughs> we never film more than three days in a row because we can't act. What's funny now, because it's such a big show, we get invited to all kinds of other shows. And people invite us, and then they give us a script. And they realize, oh my god, 
they can't act. How do we ask them to leave now? So, uh, yeah, it's a great show. Do you realize that the average pitch in front of us is an hour? So no matter, when you watch it on TV, it's seven to eight minutes. The longest pitch was two and a half hours. Damon got up, left, went to the Sony cafeteria, had lunch, came back, the guy was still pitching. <laughs> True story. Shortest what? pitch was 40 minutes. No matter how long or short, it gets edited into seven to eight minutes. Wow. You know nothing about them. Literally nothing. And in fact, when you get on the show, there's a, there's a box there that says, have you ever met any of the sharks? And the only time we stop filming, because it's very live, is if one of us recognizes somebody who pitched this before, one of us will say, hey, didn't I meet you a year ago at an airport and you pitched me? If that happens, they stop filming and you gotta leave. Because we all have to have the same level of information. Wow. Yeah. wow. All right, Spider, you know I like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, I don't have to walk at all. Hi, Robert. Uh, love you on your show and love you and Kim on Guest Superstar. She was so lucky to meet me, wasn't she? <laughs> oh my God. You know, I think back and I think, how lucky was she, Carson? Amazing. Yeah. My, my question is, um, an advice on pitfalls in business, maybe just one that you've encountered or you've experienced with some of your uh, entrepreneurs that you share with us. You know, it's funny, we sit around at lunch and we talk about this all the time. As you would expect, five people of business, what do we talk about? Business. business. And I'm really motivated by what makes people successful. I'm really motivated by learning, how do you take one person from the same background and they fail at life, and you take somebody with the same background, they're very successful. And, and especially because I think in this country, we have more opportunity than anywhere. Like, like I, I have no family in North America besides my kids. All my family is back in Eastern Europe. And to them, America, like they talk about America like some fairy tale land. They really do. They say, oh my God, if I could get to America one day. And so what makes somebody successful? I think the one thing that we agree on is when people fail in, in business, it's typically their inability to absorb failure. You know, in business, you hear the word no, and you get rejected way more than you ever win. And so it's your ability to adapt. You know, like the Tip CLs guys that I told you about, we were doing, good with the ugly Christmas sweaters, but then we're doing so good, a lot of competitors came in. So we changed, now we make onesies, like Carson said. We now make ski outfits. We now make St. Patrick's Day, you know, sweaters. Great entrepreneurs adapt to the situation. They have the ability to see the wall before they hit it. Arbor Day sweaters, that's just an idea. <laughs> I just, you know, just trying to expand the market. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? My name's James. Where are you from, James? I'm from LA. I'm a Fantastic. huge fan, Robert. You're great. Thank you. Um, quick question. So, um, I'm interested in starting like an enterprise software company. And like when you started your business and you got the first meeting and you pitched and you went, well, how do you close the sale? You offer a trial. Like, how do you get them to you know, sign on? And when people say, who else is using it? You don't have any other clients yet. How do you answer that? Wow. So, some great questions there. Um, so sales is not about pushing somebody to something. You know, the, the key to enterprise sales, the, the great thing about enterprise, enterprise sales means selling to big companies as opposed to consumers. And the thing I love about enterprise sales is when you start a company out of your basement and you want to sell to consumers, your challenge is leverage and reach. Like even if you sell one person, how do you sell to thousands? So I'm always wary when people start a small business that's dependent on a lot of consumers. The other thing that scares the crap out of me is a retail-based business. So when I started a business, people said to me, you'll never make it because in life, to make money, you need what? Money. I didn't have any money. And then the other big piece of advice I got was, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you right. know. And my mom was a receptionist, my dad swept floors in a factory, and we had no money. So one of the things I did is I said, well, I don't want to get into a business where I have to spend a dollar in inventory before I sell something. Right? Retail, you have to sign a lease for multiple years. And you know that's the thing, you gotta be honest with yourself. If you have no money, 
and you really want to do a retail store, you can't. You got to give up on that and start a different business. I love enterprise because you can just call on customers, you look them up, who the big companies are, pick up the phone, go see them. Your challenge is enterprise customers typically don't like to buy stuff that nobody else is using. So don't lie to yourself. If you have no customers, you're not going to do well. What I would do is I would go to a bunch of enterprise customers and say, hey, I have a great deal for you. I'll give you this software for free. I'll implement it for you for three months and I'll give you an enterprise license for the next three years in exchange for a reference. So if I do a good job for you, will you be a reference for me? Because in business, people always want to know what their competitors are doing. So if you want to sell to a big retail company, go and call on them and tell them what their competitors are doing and they're using your software. Excellent. Oh, we have a question. What's your name? Noah. Noah? Where are you from? Here. Oh, here. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> What's your question for Robert? I think you could teach people a lot about life, and I want to make the world better, and I want to know what you have in your life. Wow, Noah. Thank you very much. That's a great it's question. Like That's a beautiful name. name. <laughs> Is that a nickname, or is that your real name? Real name. Wow, I have, a, I have a good friend of mine. His name is Noah, he's one of my best friends. He was on the show uh, Dancing with the Stars with me three seasons ago. And it's really embarrassing because he doesn't have an arm or a leg and he danced better than me. <laughs> yeah, how awkward and embarrassing is that, right, Noah? Um, you know, I think you have to make the world better in your own way because it, better is different for everybody, right? But I think one of the great things we've learned is You've got to make a certain amount of money. You've got to take care of your family and your sister or your friends before you can take care of the world. And that's what we try to say to people. Mm. We used to do a show, in, one of the most common things people say to me is, why don't you do a Shark Tank for charities? Because you know, you guys have lots of money. Wouldn't it be great to see some charities pitch on there? And uh, why do you think we've never done a show like that? What do you guys think? Um, because the sharks always have to look good. And imagine a show, we did a show in Canada one time where these charities came and pitched us. And so, you know, we, we invested in one, we gave them money, and we did it in the others. Show errors, horrible feedback. They're like, oh my God, there was, you know, you didn't invest in the charity for the blind. Or you didn't invest in, the, because you can't invest in everything. And so what, we, what they realized was, if you're gonna do a charity on the show, we better invest in every one of them. Because otherwise you'll look like a jerk. Hmm. And so we never do that. We really try to stay away from, you know, a charity tank or making the world a better place kind of stuff. Because that's what you get. Kevin has a great line. He says, the purpose of a business is not to do charity. The purpose of a business is to make a profit. It's up to you what you do with that profit. Fantastic. Oh, I'm going to go all the way back here in the unsecured area. Oh, excuse me. Are you safe back there, Carson? I'll be okay. They look a little rough back here. I'm nervous. Okay, what's your name? Steve. Where are you from, Steve? Westerly. And what's your question? I'll have to think about that, Carson. I'm really scared for you. See, I'm getting a little nervous, Steve. Robert, why would you sell the law Ferrari? Uh, profit. Yeah. I have this, so there was this special car I had called the La Ferrari, and it was one of the rarest cars in the world, and it cost like $1.5 million and 1,000 horsepower to wait four years to get it. And it's very hard to get, and I got it, and I love this car. And then a year later, I realized, oh, there's only 500 people in the world that got it, and 10,000 people. So imagine how much wealth there is in the world. Think about this. Just to get your name on the application, you have to own three Ferraris and put down a quarter million dollar deposit. Hmm. They have 10,000 applications. Wow. And I got one of them. And a year later, I was like, it's a really cool car, but I wonder if I can make a profit on it. <laughs> and I did, and Ferrari hates when you do that, so they kicked me out of the Ferrari family. Oh. <laughs> but I recently got back in, I had to go see the Pope. And, uh, you know, put a bunch of money in a brown paper bag. Really? Give it to a guy named Enzo under the table. Drink a lot of espresso. But I'm back in the Ferrari family. 
Wow. I hate when that happens. It happens to me with um, Mitsubishi. Blonde. <laughs> what's, your, what's your name? Um, my name is Gillette Light. You know Gillette Razor? I was named after Gillette Razor, so my name is Seriously? Gillette. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's so, great, yeah. Um, actually, I'm from, I'm an immigrant. I came from the Philippines 10 years ago. And what, what's your advice to those immigrants or the people who came from different places? to achieve American dream or to start all over again? How, what's your advice for that? Like how to start business, get to resources, or have a good connection for those people who barely came from other country or states? Thank you. Well, here's the great thing about America. Nobody really cares where you're from. Yeah. They really don't, you know, nobody cares. The, the greatest thing, you can take this as good or bad. What I've learned is nobody cares. Nobody cares about your pain and nobody cares about your success after it's done. Now that's good and bad. The greatest thing about that is, if you can add value, people will give you an opportunity. That's what I love about business in America, is if you can create something that saves people money hmm. or can help their business, they will buy it. And when you're young and you're starting out, this is very empowering, but as you get older, like my age, you realize nobody cares. Like I sold the first, this thing called the firewall in North America. I go see customers now and they're like, who cares? What can you do for me today? And so it depends on what your attitude is. The fact that you're an immigrant, the fact that the person next to you comes from wealth, nobody cares. And so the thing I always say is, the world doesn't owe you anything, just an opportunity. Somebody worked really hard for you to come here. And I think especially as immigrants, it's up to you to make yourself successful. And I don't care if you want to do it for yourself, I don't care if you want to buy a Ferrari or a jet or whatever, it doesn't matter. But you owe it to the people that work their behinds to get you here to make something of yourself. And, and you know, I've always really believed that. The only other thing I'll tell you is what I learned a long time ago is I used to think, oh my gosh, that person has it easier than me. Or, you know, they come from wealth or their family helped them. What I realized was, who am I complaining to? No one's listening. Not even my dad. He's like, ah, who cares? Got a job. Right. So the, what I always think the great equalizer in life is 24 hours. Everybody in life gets the exact same amount time. of time. Yes. And the farther you are down the totem pole, the harder you have to work, the less sleep you have to get. I used to, when I was in my 20s, I used to work till 1.30 in the morning and get up at three to learn the job I was doing that started at five. And people would, at work would realize, hey, were you here at five o'clock this morning? I'm like, yeah, people would say, are you not tired? I'm like, of course I'm tired. But I'd rather be rich than uh, well rested. And so it's just a choice I'm making. Okay, we have time for like two more. Where did you go, Carson? Oh, I just I just came I'm back now. Oh, okay. I'm gonna, oh, oh, excuse me, pardon me. Okay, what, what's your name, sir? Uh, Woody Clark. Uh, I'm also an immigrant um, from New England. <laughs> <laughs> Is that near that Pennsylvania place? It's near Bernie Sanders' home. Oh. Uh, my son has a question for you. Oh. No, you're changing okay, the line. Okay, yeah. I'll ask the question. All right. So what's your next career move going to be? Um, I actually, I, I love the company. I've been working at this company uh, 11 years. I'm more of an operator, so I love, you know, everybody's different. Mark Cuban loves to invest money and never have you call him. Um, I like to run things. I love to build stuff. I love to start a company, see it grow. So I'll, I'll stay with this for a while. Okay. Uh, we'll do two more. We'll do you and then you. I'm Andre. I'm from Costa Rica. I'm also an immigrant, so I can really relate to the immigrant thing. Um, Are you here illegally? Uh, no. Oh, I'm, just joking. But I came, I came <laughs> now. I actually came through Canada, through Victoria. And... See, because Canadians love everybody. That's yeah. great. You can can you believe it. Kevin is Canadian? The meanest guy on Shark Tank is like from the nicest country. Anyway. Anyhow, I know that um, there is a, a lot going on with immigration. How do you, are you doing anything about it? Are you trying to help in this cause about immigration? 
you know, immigration is, is really a government cause. Right. I, mean, I think you, uh, it depends what happens with the election. Yeah. I mean, everybody in this country is an immigrant. The only natives are the North American native you Indian. Know, people. Everybody's an immigrant. I don't understand why we make such a big deal of uh, where people come from. I mean, I think um, in tech and Silicon Valley is a constant frustration because we want to get more people in who understand technology and we have a really, really hard time in hiring people. So I, I think, you know, I, everybody has an opportunity here. Thank you. Okay, last question. What's your name? Sawyer, where are you from? Oh, uh, here. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> um, Hi, Sawyer. Hi, Mr. Uh, did you hear that, Carson? Call me Mr. Oh, wow. Yeah. I need you to address me like that from now on, Carson. <laughs> Thank you. What does being a shark mean to you? Wow, best question I've had. What does being a shark mean to me? Um, you know, when I was your age, I used to see people on TV who had these big fancy jobs or were like on a big show. And I always used to say, if I ever had that opportunity, I would always try to give the opportunity back. What, it, what being a shark to me means is giving people an opportunity. I love our show. You know, we, we actually don't get paid very much to do the show. We all have businesses somewhere else, but I find it incredibly inspiring to be on the show. I get more out of it than the people that come on, because when you see those people come on, even the stupidest, craziest ideas, People watch at home and go, oh my God, that's stupid. They just threw them up there because it's a stupid idea for laughs. It's not. Even the craziest ones, those people really believe. And I got to tell you, it is so motivating when you see people put it on the line and it's their dream. Because isn't that what America is about? Isn't it about trying to create something, putting it all out there, and going for it? That's what being a shark to me means. Thank you. Thank you. So I Thanks, Robert. Now, everybody, um, get your copy of this book, and um, we're going to do the signing now, right? I don't Let's know if there's any special rules, but I'm sure there's a, you're going to tell us. Oh. Can everybody hold up their book so Robert can see how many people purchased this book tonight? Wow. Everybody here has the book. Now. What we're gonna do is bring you up one at a time, one row at a time. So if you're in the back, we will let you in as soon as we get everybody seated. You must have the wristband, you must have the book. You can take pictures of Robert, but not with Robert. All right, so we're gonna pull you up one row at a time. 